Would you like to use Padlet to create and deliver your next lesson, just like I did in this video? Stick around and I'll show you how you can create your first Padlet board. The first step is to go to padlet.com and create yourself an account. The free account gives you up to three Padlet boards at this point in time, and that's sufficient if you're just wanting to experiment to see what this platform can do and whether it's a good fit for what you have in mind. Once you've set up your account, you can then get to work in making your first Padlet. And to do this, you just click on the pink button here, make a Padlet, and this brings up a menu of template options. So you can see I've got options to organize my content in a brick-like wall layout, or maybe even a stream. And you can preview these by clicking on the eye icon here to see examples from other Padlet users to see how they've used this and to get an idea of what it looks like. For your first Padlet, I recommend using the canvas option because this enables you to move around content to find out what works. Don't worry if you find that you've selected a particular template and it's not working, you can change it. But for this first example, let's click here and start with Canvas. So here's the start of my Padlet board. You can see it's automatically generated a title and a color scheme, but I want to change these things. The menu in the side here will enable me to make those changes. If this menu doesn't appear automatically, then you can simply use the cog icon here to click and open up these options and start editing. So let's start making some changes. So I'm gonna change the title to the title of the lesson. So in this case, it's free time activities. And I like to use the description below the title for my own admin. So I'm gonna add details about the type of lesson it is. So in this case, it's for my elementary ESL learners. I'm gonna add an icon that relates to my students' hobbies. So I know they like hiking. So I wonder if there's a hiking Oh, yes, there is, there's a boot. Let's pick that. And you can see that little icons appeared next to the uh, title there, which is cute. And I'm gonna change the wallpaper to something simpler. So I'm gonna click on this and click solid colors in this case. I'm gonna go with the first option, which is like a off-white, which should be quite easy for students to see. The font's fine, you can change it, of course, if you want. And for posting, this is a board that I'm gonna be using for facilitating the lesson. It's not gonna be a collaborative board for my students in this case. So I'm not gonna make any changes here. I'm gonna click the, make sure the require approvals on just in case anybody else has the link to this Padlet board and wants to post things, I will get notified and I can obviously disregard that post because I don't want it to be a collaborative board as mentioned. And of course you can make some further changes such as the URL link if you want. But for the time being, this is enough changes. So I'm gonna click save. And if I close this now, you can now see that the title's changed in the corner, my description's there, I've got my cute little icon, and I've got this white background start posting on. So now we're ready to start populating our Padlet board with content. And to do this, we simply click on the plus button here, and it brings up a title that we can edit, a text box if you want to use it, and lots of options to either upload or take a photo, add a link or search for content within Padlet itself. Now for the engage stage for my students, I would like to use a picture and a few questions to get them thinking about the topic ahead. And to do this, I'm going to add some questions here. I'm gonna add instructions in the subject. And I'm gonna use a search image option uh, for a visual prompt. So a lot of my students like reading. So let's see what images come up for reading. Um, ideally I'd like an adult reading. Ah, here we go. She looks like she's reading for pleasure. And I'm gonna click now the publish button. And there we go, that's my first post. Because we opted for the canvas option, I can drag this post by simply clicking and holding down to move it around. So that gives me lots of flexibility. This is the first thing I would like students to see and so they don't get distracted by the content and getting anxious about the things. So I'm gonna put it here in the middle and I'm gonna click again and hold the arrow to make it much larger for students to see. So this will be the first thing that I project on screen to get them thinking about the topic. I want to continue posting and populating my Padlet board. So to do this, I'm gonna click on the plus again and this time I want to add a link to the Quizlet cards I've created for presenting new vocabulary related to free time activities. So I'm going to click on the link and paste the link to my Quizlet set here and add the arrow key. I'm going to give it a subject just to remind myself that this is about free time activities. Um, and put 
maybe in the caption here, new words and phrases. This is a reminder, and again, click publish. Um, this has just gone behind my video stream here, but I'm going to again drag and drop it here, scroll down and resize it to make it a bit larger. Whoops. <laughs> there we go. Now you can see there's no preview for my Quizlet card set, but that's not to worry about. Sometimes that happens. There's not a preview of the actual resource if it's an external resource, but I can just simply check to see if this is indeed working. It's not a broken link by clicking on the resource to see if it works. So let's do that now. Great. So I can see that the link is working. These are the flashcards I've created where I've got some images to elicit the concept before I show the written form and the flashcards are working. Yeah, perfect. So I can use these to present the new vocabulary and review some things with students. So brilliant. That's fine. So let's go back to the Padlet board. Let's add another example of content to our Padlet board. So in this case, I want to upload a worksheet for my students to use as part of some practice activities and scaffolded practice. So I'm going to click on the plus button again. I'm going to click on the upload option and select my worksheet here. So you can see here's my worksheet that's uploaded, my Word document, it could be a PDF as well. I'm just going to hit the publish button. You don't always need to add a subject or a text below. And as you can see, it's dropped here. So again, I'm going to drag and drop and I'm going to use the arrow to make it a bit larger. So there we go. So this is my finished Padlet board and you can see I've used a combination of content that I've generated through Padlet, such as the searching for images and the text that I've entered here and also links to other resources I've used, such as my Quizlet cards, my worksheet. I've also got a link here to a video I wanted to show students and do some listening practice with them in talking about free time activities. And finally, I've got a prompt here that I encourage them to use to interview each other about their free time activities and preferences. Now you can show students this as it is, uh, scrolling through it on the board, or if you're in an online classroom, sharing screen and working through it that way. Um, there's also another option that you can use, which is this arrow key here, which is a present slideshow. So if I click this now, you can see that it's organized the content into a slideshow like this. So I can use the arrow keys below to navigate through the content. So for example, I have the warmer activity here and my flashcards. And again, I can click on the link to go to this resource. So this is a really nice new addition that Padlet's just recently added. So this is the finished board. And as a final step, I'm just gonna change the privacy settings just to make sure it's just me that can access it. As I mentioned at the start of this video, I'm not using this for a collaborative board. It's more to organize my lesson content in one place for the means of delivering a lesson. So I'm gonna click on the share button here and change the status from secrets, which means people who do find the URL can access it, to private, which means even if they do have the URL, they can't access the board. So I'm gonna click on save to secure my board. And that's done. As a final step to access your board again, if I show you, you can go to the Padlet homepage. You can see here are all my Padlet boards that I've created. And the most recent one I've created is here. I could obviously use the search bar to search for Padlets as I do have quite a few. And you just simply click on the Padlet again and it directs you to your Padlet board. I hope you found this video helpful and that it inspires you to give Padlet a go. Let me know what you think in the comments below and make suggestions for what other videos you'd like me to make next.